Now the news from the Voice of America. Seven dead in suicide car bombing in Baghdad. North and South Korea agree to restart talks. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting live from the VOA News Center in Washington. A deadly suicide car bombing early Sunday in the Iraqi capital. Seven people were killed and at least 18 hurt in the attack on a police checkpoint in the Shiite neighborhood of Kadhimiya in northern Baghdad. Police in Ankara and Istanbul, Turkey, used tear gas and water cannon to break up demonstrations Sunday. The protesters were angry about the government's plans to close a public park in Istanbul. They are also angry about what they, they call the prime minister's imposition of his Islamist views on a secular nation. This was the 10th day of the anti-government protests. Three people have been killed and thousands hurt since the protests began. Nelson Mandela continues to fight a persistent lung infection. He is in a hospital in Pretoria, South Africa. He was taken there Saturday. It's the fourth time he's been hospitalized since December. Peter Cox reports from Johannesburg that members of the former South African president's family are with him in the hospital. Mac Maharaj, spokesman for South African President Jacob Zuma, gave this update. There are some members of the family with him, yes indeed, but again we are not just going into the details because it, it is always good for him to have somebody very close to him. It helps his recovery. Mr. Mandela's last public appearance came during the 2010 World Cup. Since then, he has been mostly homebound. Peter Cox for VOA News, Johannesburg. On Sunday, a longtime friend urged the country to prepare for Mr. Mandela's death. Yemeni security and tribal sources say an apparent American drone strike Sunday killed at least three suspected al-Qaeda militants. The sources said several drone-fired missiles hit at least one vehicle carrying the militants in the northern province of al Jaf. Pakistan's new government has made a formal complaint to the United States about a drone strike on Friday near the Afghan border. Officials say seven militants were killed in the attack. An aide to the American ambassador was called to the Pakistani Foreign Office on Saturday to receive the complaint. Libya's army chief Yusuf al mangush has resigned. He made his decision after clashes between protesters and a government-supported militia in the eastern city of Benghazi left 31 people dead. General Mangush was in charge of the militias. He's been criticized for delays in forming a national army, which has allowed the militias to grow. State security officers have also accused him of corruption and of failing to exercise authority over the militias. President Obama and Chinese President Xi Jinping have ended two days of meetings in the United States. They talked about cybersecurity, North Korea, and climate change. Tom Donilon, Mr. Obama's national security advisor, told reporters the two men agreed that resolving cybersecurity differences is important to the future of their relationship. If it's not addressed, uh, if there continues to be this direct theft um, of the United States property, that this was going to be a very difficult problem in the economic relationship and was going to be an inhibitor, inhibitor to the relationship really reaching its full potential. The two leaders agreed they will not let North Korea have nuclear weapons. Representatives from South and North Korea met at the Truce Village of Panmunjom on Sunday and into the early hours of Monday. They agreed on rules for a high-level meeting between the two countries in Seoul on Wednesday. The talks went on for a total of 18 hours. They were the first meetings of their kind in more than two years. The uh, meetings on Wednesday will talk about possible reopening of the Kaesong Industrial Complex, a jointly run factory in North Korea that was closed in April. A newspaper in Britain and another in the United States have now named the man who worked at America's National Security Agency as the source of information that revealed the spy agency as monitoring Americans' phone calls. 
29-year-old Edward Snowden says he urged the newspapers to name him. He said he will not hide because he doesn't believe he did anything wrong. He fled the United States for Hong Kong last month. He said he knows he will suffer for what he did. Parts of Austria, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, and Germany were flooded again on Sunday. The flooding in the past few days has caused the deaths of at least 18 people and has forced thousands of people from their homes in Germany. Emergency workers are helping people in the eastern and southern parts of the country. Rising waters from the Danube River are expected to reach Budapest on Monday. That's the news at this hour from The Voice of America. For more on these and other stories from around the world, around the clock, go to voanews.com. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News, Washington.